Columbo, Kojak, Magnum P.I., and now, the adventure begins. The Michael Richards Show, coming this fall to NBC. When Seinfeld aired its final episode on May 14th, 1998, over 76 million tuned in to say goodbye to Jerry, George, Kramer, and Elaine. With the show going out at the top of its game, it seemed only natural that the other cast members would move on to their own respective television projects. Over the next decade, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Jason Alexander, and Michael Richards would each get a chance to headline their very own sitcoms, some of them more than once. Well, you look familiar. <laughs> Have we met somewhere? I can't imagine where. But unlike Seinfeld, most of these attempts would fail to last more than one season. This would lead to television critics coining the term the Seinfeld curse. I want to examine all of these supposed cursed shows to see if they really deserve to be canceled so quickly or if they were never given a fair chance because they were stuck in the shadow of Seinfeld. So let's take a look at the first one of these projects to air, The Michael Richards Show. Case number one of the Seinfeld Curse Files. Of all these Seinfeld Curse sitcoms, the Michael Richards Show looked to have all the right pieces to be a major success the most. Not only would it air on NBC just over two years after Seinfeld had ended, it would also reunite Kramer actor Michael Richards with three of Seinfeld's writers. Giddy up. The show would also have a supporting cast that included the talents of Tim Meadows, Bill Cobbs, and William Devane. Giddy up again. The concept of this show began because Michael Richards had long dreamed of playing a private investigator, and Seinfeld had always allowed him to showcase many of his character's alter egos, usually on secret missions within the story. But then again, I've been known to do a lot of things. Hi, I'm a H.E. Pennypacker. Yes, I'm a... Dr. Van Ostrom from the clinic. So this led the creative team to develop a sitcom that would center around Michael Richards as a private detective, whose unorthodox methods would always lead to him cracking the case. Richards and the writers envisioned the character to be close to Columbo in nature, a comedic take on the typical hard-boiled detective type. The network, however, had other ideas. They pushed for them to make the character as much like Kramer as possible, wanting him to be more clumsy and aloof and it's clear from the early promos that they really weren't thinking of this as the Michael Richards show as much as they were thinking of it as the Kramer show. Uh, excuse me, ladies. It's a new fall show about a P.I. We're gonna have fun with that Seinfeld guy, yeah. Can I help you? I'm, uh, you know, I'm just checking the doors. The character, named Vic Nardoza, appeared to behave, move, and even dress like Cosmo Kramer. These two conflicting ideas of what the character should be resulted in an inconsistency in the tone of the show. Sometimes Nardoza was slick and smart, while he gradually kind of became more bumbling and goofy as the episode went on. For example, in the first episode to air, Vic is hired by Arthur, who's played by Mike Haggerty, to find out if his fiance is cheating on him. Oh, nothing suspicious. Uh, no, I mean, you know, like any other woman, you know, she likes to go out and party, get real drunk, you know. <laughs> anyway, she won't talk about it, but that's not suspicious. I mean, that's just the way she is. You're a lucky man. Vic then tries to recruit a phys ed teacher to bait the fiance. And here we get to see Vic as the smooth-talking private eye. We did a good job. We got what we needed. I didn't get what I needed. All right, look, we've been through that. You know, we're not a dating service. Had her top off, her skirt up, thought I had some privacy. Mitch. And then Vic breaks up the party. All right, look, forget about that. You want more money? It's not about the money. It's about the perks, man. But when the teacher declines, Vic has to become the bait himself. He then overexerts himself while trying to get in shape, and the episode quickly diverges into Kramer territory, with an incredibly sore Vic trying to pick up the fiancé at a bar. Uh, bartender! Bartender! I'm a little sore. I've been working out. Mm. So, uh, like Herbie Hancock? You're the worst I've ever seen. Well, and we just met. No, seriously, um... What do you think is the best religion? Okay. <laughs> and then in the second episode, they don't really waste time, as in the cold open, there's a scene where Vic is attacked by fire ants 
while investigating an insurance fraud. And after that's over, the case is never brought up or mentioned again. Many of the storylines on this show are like that. Very messy. Writers seem too concerned with thinking of silly scenarios for Vic to get into, rather than focusing on actual mysteries, which should have been at the core of the show. Much like he did with Kramer, Vic becomes a showcase for Michael Richards' immense talent in physical comedy. But it quickly wears thin, as so much of that comedy just feels like recycled Kramer bits. There's one episode in particular where Vic disguises himself as a mailman to get to the bottom of false charges on his credit card, where he then goes to war with an actual mailman, in what feels like an unused Kramer and Newman subplot that was just dusted off for this show. Look, this is a costume. This isn't really who I am. No kidding. All right, let me see what you gave you there. Those could be clues, all right? What is that? Me! Fight! <laughs> Most of the remaining episodes follow that structure. Vic gets a case that requires him to go undercover, which then leads to a wacky disguise and slapstick comedy showcase. <laughs> In fairness, there's also some B-plots that involve the other characters on their own cases, and while watching the show, I found Tim Meadows and Bill Cobb's characters to be the best on the show. You know what kind of burn that is? Now, a pot is on it, okay? That's a third degree burn. That's the worst kind of burn there is. That makes you the worst co-worker there is. Despite all it had going for it, the show just couldn't decide what it wanted to be, and viewers began tuning in less and less. We need a new format. We should shut down and retool. which led the show to be cancelled after just eight episodes had aired. The sad part is this sitcom could have been good if it had been done slightly differently. Comedy and mystery can actually work well together. Just look at Monk, which would come a few years later. The ironic part being, Michael Richards actually turned down the part of Monk. It was going to air on ABC in 2000, and when he backed out, the creators took their project to USA Network, cast Tony Shalhoub, and the result was one of the most successful comedy mystery series of all time. Perfect blend of the genres. The problem with The Michael Richards Show is that they let the slapstick elements overtake the mystery elements, leading to an uneven balance that makes most of the comedy feel forced. I mean, I actually like the concept. Michael Richards is a private eye who relies on different disguises and characters to solve his cases, but there needs to be more to the premise than just that. What about a guest host? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> Let's look back at that episode where Vic is trying to bait his client's fiance. In the end, he winds up sleeping with the fiance, which makes him not only a bad private eye, but kind of a bad person too. It would have been much more interesting if Vic couldn't get the fiance to take the bait, and he became self-conscious and his ability to pick up women as a result. Maybe he recently had gone through a divorce, and the case then becomes a backdrop for him to learn how to date again. At least this would have given the characters some depth and motivation to try harder, as opposed to just trying harder because wacky comedy has to happen. I guess it is unfair to blame the creative team, as I think they wanted the show to stand on its own feet, but the network, especially being NBC, clearly didn't want to try something new, resulting in a Seinfeld spinoff in disguise. <laughs> I know Michael Richards has made some poor career decisions in later years, and I'm not here to defend him. I'm just saying, at the time this sitcom was made, he was at the top of his game, and NBC should have put better effort into making this sitcom its own thing. Michael Richards is an immense talent in physical comedy. It's just a shame that The Michael Richards Show wasn't really a good vehicle for that comedy.